Today at Free Fuel Training, we are taking a look at a SWAT plate carrier setup. If you stick around, you might see some things that you hadn't thought of before, some concepts from the real world that maybe you hadn't thought of, and some ways of looking at things and ways of setting things up that you wouldn't have considered had you not seen the experience talking here. The gentleman that I gave this carrier to a few months ago works part-time on a part-time SWAT team that is an absolute bear to keep up with training and call-outs for. These guys are out three, four times a week all over the south suburbs of Chicago, kicking in doors, serving warrants, dealing with people who barricade themselves inside houses with guns and knives and all sorts of other stuff, people taking hostages, things like that. So this gets very real use in the very real world, and because of that, there's some stuff that you're gonna see in this video that you're probably not gonna see from lots of other people on the internet throwing three mags on the front of their carrier and a bunch of extra ammo in the backpack and carrying around water and water purification, all sorts of stuff on their carrier. This is set up for a very different thing. Because of that, you are gonna see actual wear and tear on the things that are on this carrier, and you're gonna see some smart, thought-provoking things that he's doing with this carrier setup. Now, ordinarily, I would leave the patches on the way they are, but because it said police and the agency on there, not that it'd be really hard for you to figure out what agency it is that he's working for, if you know me or him or anything about the Chicago suburbs, I took it off just to keep from causing any problems and put some police patches on from Tactically Suited. I wish I had a whole box of these Tactically Suited patches, but I don't, I only have the two, so I put those front and one on the back to give you the idea of where his patches would be. I tried to match up with the size that his police plus agency patch would be so you could see kind of how they work out. So up front, he's got his identification, normally has a name tape across the front of it, and you see comms. Comms are extremely important for a SWAT team. He is one of the team leaders and the training coordinator for that team, so he's almost got two full-time jobs between patrol and doing this, and for that, comms are extremely important. We've got an Atlantic signal push to talk here. We've got a plug that runs up, and then a curly cord that runs all the way to the radio that's in the back of the pouch. This plugs directly into the headset that's attached to his helmet that also stores his nods. They've got dual tube white phosphor nods. And this allows him to just be able to push this little button here on the side, be able to key up and talk with the team. You also note only two mags up front. No reason to carry a whole bunch of extra ammo when most of the time, if we get through just the one or two mags on the rifle, pretty sure he carries two on his rifle. You're gonna do one for the record books on a SWAT team. Guys carrying 10 mags up front, eh, I don't know how useful that is. And his idea with this setup is to be as slick and fast as humanly possible, figuring you're less likely to get shot if nobody can hit you. And since he's built kind of like a spider monkey and acts kind of like a spider monkey that somebody gave an energy drink to, I'd say that's probably the right setup for him. Going along with the theme of fast and light, up front he's got a Surefire, looks like either a G2 or a 6P, or maybe it's a G2 body mounted with a 6P head. You never know with him, but it's a, a dual CR123 Surefire flashlight. This is a, a really powerful and compact light that is very, very durable, and I'm sure that's why he has it up here in a taco pouch. He's got uh, two fast mag pouches up front. The quick disconnect on three points so he can easily ditch out but still a slick side on one side so it doesn't just come falling off of him. He said that this helps with being able to shoulder the rifle on the offhand side which makes sense. It'd be a little harder to do that. I want to reduce the amount of complications with that. Uh, on the left side of his body he's got a pouch here with secondary med or maybe primary med depending on how you look at it. We've had some instances here in the Chicagoland area guys getting caught under fire inside of a building. There was a pretty popular instance of that not long ago where I think it was a, a police lieutenant in Chicago got stuck inside a building they couldn't get medical attention to him. So he's got two tourniquets inside this pouch and a pressure dressing inside so that when you need quick med now and you need lots of it he can take care of himself and the guys on his team. Also, the medics on the team want you to carry extra med so that way there's plenty to go around in case somebody gets hurt or a group of somebody gets hurt. Remember, from a SWAT perspective, they never know what they're walking into or how long they're gonna be there, so they need a little bit of sustainment. They have logistics people that can bring them water and food if they just get held down somewhere for a while, but med is an absolute priority. Rolling around on the back of his carrier here, we've got a two chem lights. He's got a day glow chem light 
He's got a normal chem light and then an IR chem light, again, dealing with night vision all the time. He's got his radio in the back here, and we've got the flap here that's normally over it. He's got his radio in the back. This is an APX 7000 radio, and he's got the antenna for it run through Mali with something Velcroed over the top, so that way it holds it down. Normally, he'd have this American flag patch would be showing, but I've got my patch over the top of it. He's got his primary med kit in here full of all the stuff the medics want them to carry. And you can see it's all in plastic bags, several layers of plastic bags, and some of them are ripped open. That's real world, actual things that happen in real life when things aren't perfect. This is, of course, covered operationally, so that way all of this stuff is held into place, and it creates a slick surface that's less likely for things to get caught up on. So the radio isn't getting caught up on anything inside a house. The med pouch isn't getting caught up on anything. Keeps it slick and underneath, and he's got his red cross on there, so that way you can see where his med pouch is at. Medics will be able to get inside and know where it's at. Inside the bag, we've got only a gas mask. So he's got an Avon gas mask and canister for it, and that's it inside. Again, this is about staying light and fast and not getting hung up on things. Back in the day, we used to carry the gas mask in the gas mask pouch attached to your leg, and anybody that's ever done that for a period of time knows that running with that on sucks, and also it tends to get caught on things going through doorways because we don't normally think about having an extra eight, nine inches sticking out from our leg in our day-to-day -day lives. On this side of the bag, we've got another IR chem light and a normal glow chem light. On the far side, we've got a 3A soft armor panel in here with two normal chem lights on the side and a little pouch here that's currently empty. I'm sure it's probably some issued team gear. Inside of this, there are two ceramic plates because their primary threat that they're worried about is explosives and rifle threats and not in that order. So he's got level four standalone ceramic plates in this, which makes it pretty heavy. Because it's pretty heavy, even though the Agilate K19 comes with plenty of soft, squishy material up here, he's got gel pads on the, both sides of the tops in order to give himself some more cushion. And then on here, we've got a steel hook. I actually have one of these on one of my setups. Uh, that was uh, uh, tactically acquired in order to keep your sling of your rifle from rubbing up against your neck. Again, if you're carrying a rifle around and wearing armor 16, 18, 24, 36 hours, that sling rubbing on your neck is a real problem. He's got a dangler down here, and in this is just chem lights and an extra radio battery. Now these radio batteries for the APX 7000, I have a couple of these for work and these will run me a 16 hour shift, just one of them. So between this one and the one in the radio, we've got some real talking power on here. You can talk on this and talk on this and talk on this. So for SWAT purposes, where you're not talking on the radio a lot, sitting on a barricade or something, for a couple of days you could spend before you start running out of radio battery. He's got a bunch of extra chem lights in here. And then down here, we've got a rubber wedge for holding doors open. Uh, the idea of this is, instead of having to find something to hold the door open, you can take this, shove it between the door and the jam, or shove it up at the top in the mechanism, and hold the door open without having to have somebody holding a door open or finding something to jam in there. They don't weigh a lot, and the rubber tends not to break. And they're pretty cheap, especially if you hang out in abandoned warehouses all the time, breaking doors for extra SWAT training. It says he's just laying around on the floor in various places. And finally, up front, on the carrier, we've got a notepad, a marker, and a pen. Because these are the things you need in order to collect information and then relay it to somebody else without having to directly tell them. The carrier, of course, is the Agilate K19. That is their newest plate carrier. And on the back is the AMAP backpack that is mounted into the K19. This is Velcroed on down the middle as well, so it keeps that from flopping around when you're running. This stays attached pretty securely so you don't end up throwing yourself off balance. And I think that the modifications that he's done on here and the equipment that he's put on has gotten him really close to that goal of having the lightest, slickest thing possible. There isn't a lot of wear on the bottom from carrying it around, moving it. There's no abrasion holes through it in three months of really heavy use, at least 15 hours a week he spends physically in this out operational. Uh, the only complaint 
that I had about it uh, after looking at it is that these uh, attachments are not color coded to the material of the, the carrier. So you've got a black zipper instead of a green zipper. You've got black interior mesh instead of green interior mesh. But for his purposes, since most of the stuff he's putting on there is issued and is black anyway, it doesn't really matter that, that these things aren't colored properly. Links to as much of this as I can are down in the description down below. Also, there is a whole video on the K19 plate carrier and the AMAP backpack. If you want to see just those instead of all the stuff in it so you get a better idea of what you're looking at, I'm going to put a link up there and down below for that as well. There's also links and coupon codes for the K19 plate carrier and the backpack down in the description. If you use those links and coupon codes, I do make a little bit of money. I do suggest, that, however, that you shop around for where you can get the best price of all of the gear that you're going to use, especially if you're on the job making money doing it. Shop around and get the best price possible on this stuff. Just make sure you don't get any counterfeits. Lots of them running around there in the nylon market. If you guys have any questions, please put them down in the comment section down below. I love to see the questions. Oftentimes we get very interesting conversations down there, people arguing about all of the different stuff and what they would do differently because they know much better than the guy that literally trains SWAT operators to go do hostage rescue. I would love to see those comments down below, even just for the entertainment value of them. If you have any questions about what's on here, something that I didn't cover, put those down in the comments down below. I'll do my best to ask him and, and get back to you with an answer. But normally the community is pretty good about uh, giving you the answer before I ever get to it. Till next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made. Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description.